I've made no bones about my stance on the Scorch Shot across several videos on this channel. However, it's difficult to go into detail on just why the Scorch Shot is so broken when my current preoccupation is talking about another weapon entirely. So this is it. The Scorch Shot is finally getting the dissection it deserves from the guy who probably hates it the most. Let's talk about why the Scorch Shot is evil. <laughs> For starters, let's clarify what the Scorch Shot even does. Like its flare gun contemporaries, the Scorch Shot will ignite players it hits for the maximum afterburn damage that TF2 allows. It deals slightly less damage than the flare gun, more precisely it deals 35% less damage, which equates to 20 damage on hit. Upon hitting an enemy directly, it will also inflict a stun lock effect on them killing their momentum and bopping them up in the air slightly. And rather than the enemy simply consuming the projectile, it will now bounce up in the air, hovering for a short time before coming back down to explode once it touches the ground, now inflicting a small amount of damage and full afterburn on anyone around the hit target, and dealing mini crit damage to said target, or anyone else currently on fire as the projectile deals mini crit damage to burning players. It also has a not often used effect of dealing increased knockback to burning players, turning the long range stun lock into more of a long range air blast. The projectile also has a blast radius roughly the size of the beggar's bazooka rockets. Upon hitting any surface, it'll deal the same slightly reduced damage and full afterburn that the bouncing flare does. On top of this, should there be any sticky bombs anywhere within its blast radius, they will be instantly destroyed. And finally, it can be used to perform a small detonator-style jump at the cost of an extra 35% self-damage. Okay, that was a lot. And that's the biggest problem. If I'm not mistaken, this is the single most rewarding weapon in the entire game for hitting an enemy one time. You deal damage. You inflict damage over time. You stunlock them. You hit them a second time with the same flare and deal mini crit damage. And that's not even factoring in if it manages to hit other people with the same projectile. A lot of weapons upon hitting someone will simply deal damage, and many others will deal damage along with some other kind of effect. For example, the scout's pistol simply deals damage, but the flying guillotine will deal damage and inflict a damage over time bleeding effect. The effectiveness of these extra effects is typically balanced by the drawbacks. In this example, the drawbacks of the guillotine are its arcing projectile, which can be difficult to aim, and its nature as a cooldown weapon as opposed to the pistol, which is ready at any time, deals hitscan damage, and is more effective at close range. Another example would be the soldier's rocket launcher and black box. The rocket launcher simply deals damage, but the black box heals a small amount on hit, at the cost of one less rocket in the clip. So it's not good for chaining together more complex rocket jumps or for more sustained fights, but it is good for survivability. Now we move over to Pyro. The flare gun is a perfectly balanced side grade to the shotgun. The shotgun is highly effective at close range, bypasses fire resistance, and shoots quickly, but falters at long ranges and needs to reload, effectively putting a hard stop on the amount of damage you can put out consistently. The flare gun is perfect for long range harassment of a single target like a sniper or heavy or even the occasional engineer who would normally destroy you. It rewards pyros who can aim their flares with long-range afterburn damage, and most importantly with critical hits on burning targets, which is not only useful at long range on a target you've already hit while still giving the target time to retreat to cover, but also at close range as a combo tool with your flamethrower of choice. But for hitting someone once, all you do is 30 damage and inflict afterburn on them. Still better than the shotgun at long range, but substantially weaker at close range and against fire-resistant targets. The flare gun is at its strongest when it's following up on a previous attack. With the Scorch Shot, all of this is irrelevant. For hitting someone once with the Scorch Shot, you are 1. Dealing damage, only 10 less than the flare gun. 2. Inflicting max duration afterburn. 3. Stun locking the opponent. 4. Hitting the opponent a second time with a mini crit not only nullifying the decreased damage, but ensuring that your initial hit will actually do more damage than the flare gun on top of reapplying afterburn, even if they used a consumable fire extinguisher like Gerardi or Mad Milk to put out the initial hit. And five, hitting anyone around them with that second hit, damaging and burning them as well. And apparently this is all balanced out because it does 10 less damage and doesn't crit burning targets. That's it. 
Those are the only downsides compared to the flare gun. It is incredibly rewarding for what is expected to be the bare minimum for simply dealing damage. But even more than this, if all you want is to be even more effective at long range harassment than the flare gun's initial shot, you don't even need to hit the target. Just hit the ground near a choke point and people can no longer go through it without catching on fire or getting stun locked if you do manage to hit them. It's as if the gun itself thinks so little of you that it doesn't actually expect you to hit anyone with it because getting hit by the projectile is so incredibly punishing. Let me make this as clear as I possibly can. You are rewarded more than any other weapon in the game for hitting someone one time, and you are rewarded more than any other weapon in the same weapon group for missing. Because by missing, you can still hit multiple people with the same flare, and even if you only hit one person, the decreased damage is laughably negligible. Compare this to the detonator. In order to light multiple people on fire with that, you not only need to aim it properly, usually going over the heads of players in a group, but you also need precision timing in order to pull this off. And on top of that, if you just hit someone once, it's just a slightly worse flare gun. And if you hit someone twice, it's a substantially worse flare gun. It's a weapon that's much more lenient in terms of letting you hit single targets easier, and it lets you hit groups of enemies, but it trades precision aim for precision timing and a different skill set, on top of trading burst damage for crowd control. The point is, if you miss with the detonator, you miss with it. You can not only miss your initial shot, but you can also flub your detonation, making it a skill-based weapon despite, on paper, being similar to the Scorch Shot. With the Scorch Shot, you have to actively TRY to miss with it. In my video on the Gas Passer, I mentioned that Afterburn really isn't that big a deal. And on its own, it really isn't. Besides the sheer number of things that can extinguish fire, this is for two main reasons. Pyros trying to inflict Afterburn with their flamethrowers need to get close to do damage in a game where the majority of classes deal high close range damage, and Pyros trying to do it from a distance need to actually aim. The longer the distance, the more room for error and the more flares they probably won't be able to hit. What this means is that no matter what, the Pyro either needs to put themselves at risk or put in the effort to learn how to properly aim the flare gun or time the detonator's explosions. So, what happens when we take away both the risk and the effort from the equation? Afterburn is now free. So if the Pyro can stay alive for as long as he needs to, while constantly being able to apply Afterburn to a group of people, this means that resources which put out fires are going to be consumed very quickly leaving many to deal with the full consequences of that full afterburn duration. This is of course highly detrimental to the scoreboard economy, as now the scores of engineers with well-placed dispensers and pyros air blasting are artificially inflated. In all seriousness though, combined with the fact that the scorch shot has a projectile faster than the direct hits with the splash damage of the beggar's bazooka, and it doesn't even have a hard reload and can in fact reload passively, any choke point you want is now your bitch. It's not even like a sticky trap where you need to take the time to set it up. Just park your ass in a sniper spot and spam the hell out of it, without even needing to aim like a sniper does. May as well just get rid of your keyboard and grab a snack once you're here because your job is done. If someone wants to push through, they risk getting hit directly which is absolutely devastating. The initial hit and mini crit alone will bring light classes down to half health, and if they can't extinguish the fire in time, which is now very likely as everyone trying to do the same thing is now eating up all the resources meant to put out afterburn, they will die from it. Yes, if you are a light class, get hit directly and don't get extinguished, you will die. All for getting hit once. What all this adds up to is that this is not a flare gun. This is a long range rocket launcher with damage over time. It's fucking insane. How insane you ask? Well, if it isn't already obvious, I'm extremely petty, so I did the math. Which isn't something I normally do, since I fucking hate math. I calculated my kills, assists, and damage per minute over a series of 10 start-to-end single-stage payload rounds. 5 rounds using only the flare gun, 5 rounds using only the scorch shot. I only pulled out my flamethrower to extinguish teammates or push people away from me. Now, in theory, the flare gun should easily win out on all fronts. It has higher base damage and higher burst damage, 
but once I put the actual data together, the results were far from surprising. Now, I actually didn't expect the kills per minute to exceed the flare gun, since the flare gun is such a good finisher, but the scorch shot still managed to inch it out. Assists per minute is absolutely laughable. It's easily the least important of these stats, but the fact that it's so much better is just funny to me. And finally, there's about 30 more damage per minute on the Scorch Shot versus the Flare Gun. Now, I only did 5 rounds per weapon because I don't hate all the people I play against, and I wanted to limit my time using this against actual players as much as possible, so my data isn't the best out there. I also missed more than I would have liked with the Scorch Shot since my brain is wired to actually hitting the enemy directly. I didn't spam the ground as much as I could have, which could affect my numbers. The point is, it's been tested. Now I'll admit, these results aren't all that different. It's not an order of magnitudes better or anything. But the point is, you can do just as well, and probably better than the flare gun, and not have to put in any effort at all. It's like, why bother learning to aim flares in the first place? It just seems like you're actively being punished with less damage for trying to use your brain, and that just bums me out. You see, there's this little thing in game theory called dominant strategy. It tells that if you're given an ultimate method of disposing of obstacles in a game, you're always going to use it. Why even make this complex moves list when you can just one-button mash your way through the game? And do I even need to mention that making fire damage both risk and effort-free makes the flog, well, actually broken. Here's the thing, I'm not of the opinion that the flog on its own is overpowered. I'm really not. It's certainly annoying, especially when the pyro is getting pocketed, but the fact that you need to get in close to do fire damage with it means that you're at risk of getting destroyed by soldiers and demos who you'd normally be able to deal with thanks to air blast, on top of your existing weaknesses to heavies, snipers, and sentries. You even have a new weakness to demo knights who can one-shot you while you can't do anything about it but hold down the fire button on a subclass with built-in fire resistance. And if you want to counter this, you either need to pull out your own melee against a melee specialist, or equip a shotgun and get rid of one of your main sources of fire damage. To a certain degree, it's within the power of both sides to dictate how powerful a flog power is going to be because he needs to be tactical with his crits. But when fire damage is free, the Pyro will always have the advantage because 300 points of fire damage is extremely easy to achieve and approaching him will be nearly impossible when you're constantly getting whittled down and stunlocked, meaning he effectively has crits whenever he needs them. And every Pyro who does this absolutely knows what they're doing is evil. I don't feel bad about using my platform to call them cunts because that's exactly what they want. Seriously. Call one of them out for doing this in chat, they'll just respond with some meme or smiley face chat bind and hard focus you for the rest of the match. Because apparently, calling someone out for abusing a blatantly broken weapon makes you the toxic one, and not the person ruining everyone else's fun in the first place. And to a certain degree, that extends to Scorch Shot players as a whole. They know what they're doing. As completely brainless as this weapon is, even as brainless as the weapon seems to think the user is, the people using it aren't stupid. They know for a fact it's broken and enjoy abusing it. I'm a sniper main and this entire time I haven't even mentioned how hard it counters sniper because that is a drop in the bucket. It's barely even worth bringing up aside from the fact that ordinarily, a sniper would be the best choice to counter someone who can lock down a choke point from a distance. But the Scorch Shot makes that nearly impossible unless you break out the old shield of go fuck yourself. Which hey, I don't like, but at least it's an option. The problem isn't that it counters my main, it's the fact that it counters fucking everything. If anything, I feel bad for pyros who work hard learning the ins and outs of the flare gun and detonator, only for someone who only bothered to put in as much effort as simply taping his mouse button down to completely overshadow them. Every single facet of this thing is such a blatantly poor weapon design that I honestly don't know how it made it through testing. Now, if I were to try and rebalance the Scorch Shot, here's what I'd do. Now, just because I hate this weapon in its current state, doesn't mean I want to nerf it to the point where it's basically unusable, because I'm not Valve. I'd make it so that the explosion effect only occurs when directly hitting an enemy. No bouncing flare, no stun lock, no brainless spam. This would give it a similar effect to the detonator, but with a different playstyle. While the trick with the detonator is aiming over a group of enemies to catch as many people on fire as possible with your detonation, the trick with the scorch shot would be to aim for the center of a group. That's it. You can keep the increased knockback on burning targets and even have the shittier detonator jump. 
As long as there's no stun lock on the initial hit, you can still have the air blast style knockback on burning players since that would be used as a sort of long range force in nature on maps like Upward or Nucleus which I think would be a lot of fun, and it gives players hit by it more control as they'd be more able to air strafe to safety. It could even still work well with the flog as a makeshift air blast on lit targets, so it gets to maintain a degree of synergy. Way more balanced, actually fun to fight, actually fun to use, not broken. It still treads a bit too much on the ground that the detonator walks on, but I'd be fine with that. Really, what ends up pissing me off so much about this weapon is that the other flare guns are really fun. They're probably my favorite part about playing Pyro. Getting a long range crit flare is satisfying, and using the detonator to flank to unexpected areas is a lot of fun. And the man melter is, uh, the score shot isn't even fun to use. It's the Pyro equivalent of a turtling engineer. You sit in your little corner, holding mouse one, making this infuriating noise that I don't know how anyone can stand, and preventing anyone from having any fun. In other words, it's WM1 without the need for W. All I want is for the Scorch shot to be fun to use and fun to fight. That's just not the case now. I hope that can change soon though. I mean shit dude, it should at least have some kind of counter besides the shield of go fuck yourself. But there just isn't anything in the game like that right now. Right?